It's always lovely to get back into the costumes for Downton and this time with the new movie and the fact that we were in the south of France, we got such cool new costumes. The new wardrobe feels richer and more cinematic. It's really beautiful. It's just a real treat. Hey there, Focus fashion fans, and welcome to Dressed, the series that celebrates the costumes of Focus Features films. And today, you are cordially invited into the hallowed halls of Downton Abbey. In Downton Abbey, a new era. All of your favorite characters are facing some exciting new adventures. Confronted by the financial struggles of Downton's upkeep, Lady Mary accepts a film studio's request to shoot a movie at the estate, while Lord Grantham takes his English entourage to the south of France to unravel the mystery of why Downton's matriarch, the Dowager Countess, has had a French villa bequeathed to her. And with that, I will say goodnight and leave you to discuss my mysterious past. Let's talk about the wedding dress that we saw Lucy wear at the top of the movie. If you could touch this right now, it's literally a whisper of a fabric. Delicate tool, delicate beading. But what I love about this, again, it is really about the specific details that make these things authentic to its period, but also to its particular characters. And you can see the drop waist here. And that was a very innovative detail for that particular time. And of course, Lucy wearing it, well, I like to think of her as a sort of forward-thinking fashion character. So this is so beautiful. And of course, when you see the movie, you can see the beautiful tulle veil that was paired with this, but I have no room to unwrap that here. One of my new favorite characters is a new character, and this was Myrna, who shows up at Downton Abbey to make her movie, and she embodies all of the Hollywood glamour of that particular era. And I loved it when she stepped out of the car, and you saw that tilt up from the shoes to the entire outfit. And of course, there she is against the blue skies, wearing sky blue. Here she is in that fur trim, cape-like jacket over the hammered silk dress, and she literally glides in like a breeze of glamour. Let's not forget about the gentleman. Here's Lord Grantham, of course, traveling from the hollowed halls of Downton Abbey on the boat all the way to the colorful Mediterranean Sea of the south of France. And you know what you have to wear? Something casual. So this is what is called his leisure suit. So the next time you think you're casual, just remember Lord Grantham. While we're on the subject of the guys, let's talk about Tom, who of course traveled to the Mediterranean in this light-colored linen suit. Now, while you all think that, Joe, this is just a light-colored linen suit, there's more to it than meets the eye. The light color was very innovative for its time, but let's talk about the fabric. Linen was really considered a poor man's fabric at the time because it was wrinkled easily, it was used for potato linens, and here it is reimagined as a very elegant suit so you can actually have it all. While we're on the subject of Tom, let's talk about when he was frolicking in the south of France. And when he went swimming, of course, he put on what is known as a bathing costume. So this is actually a heavy knit, almost like a sweater knit. And it is one piece, it's belted, and it's got the mini shorts as well. Look at this, gentlemen. Are you ready for this? Let's talk about this dress that Cora was wearing in what we call Wedgwood Blue. This is actually completely signature of the time. In 1929, again, we are talking about that drop waist. It was very signature, it was a little bit away from the body, but the beading on this is exquisitely done. It's hand beaded. The great thing about this is that this really shows exactly what 1929 was about when you were talking about fashion. And I love, love, love this dress. We cannot talk about costumes, but not talk about one of our most beloved and iconic characters. Of course, I'm talking about Maggie Smith as the Dowager Countess. If you look at all of the details and the exquisite beading and the sequins and the rosettes and each of it intricately placed and hand done on this particular dress, it is so symbolic of that particular time, but of course, of the character herself. Women like us fall into two categories, dragons, and fools, you must make sure they think of you as a dragon. I would actually love to learn more about these costumes, so why don't we go speak to the costume designer, Anna Robbins. Hi, Anna, it's so wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, it's lovely to be here. Now, when Downton made the transition from TV series to film, was there also a conscious shift in your thinking when it came to costume design? On the small screen, you're much more likely to sort of see from portraits scale, you're less likely to have these sort of beautiful sweeping full-length shots. So 
there's a bit more focus on the shoes, I think, in the films, or the knowledge that we're going to see the kind of full ensemble pieces with everybody together. You're thinking in terms of the quality of the original garments as well, because a dress on the small screen will be a number of centimetres high, but when you bring it into a theatre, it'll end up being metres high. And so the beadwork and the quality of these dresses that are almost 100 years old have got to be pretty much museum quality. Downton Abbey, a new era, kicks off with a gorgeous wedding, of course, with Lucy wearing that full-length dress. Now, can you give me some details and what you were thinking in creating that wedding dress? I wanted Lucy's wedding dress to feel quite different. I wanted it to feel quite fresh, quite contemporary for the time and quite relaxed in that you could imagine her picking up her skirts and having a proper dance at her reception. I wanted it to feel like there was real movement and energy in it. And I just had this idea of a kind of low back. So you're getting a kind of beautiful shape as you come in through the church and up the aisle. And the idea of using tulle, so a silk tulle. So you get a kind of frothy, effervescent vibe to the skirts, which again was this feeling of things just becoming really relaxed and it was sort of Branson and Lucy and it was their day and they were doing things the way they wanted to do them. This film is unique because there are so many exciting storylines that require different styles of costuming. Of course, you have the South of France and then you have quote unquote Hollywood coming into Downton and then you have that sort of inspiration of Americana, you have French, you have British influences. How did you tackle all of those cultural touch points in it all coming together and not make it feel so disjointed when it came to costumes. It was really exciting to read the scripts and know that we were able to explore such different visuals. And it came down to a careful consideration of palette and wanting to feel like when we were in the south of France, you had this lovely contrast with the richer tones at the Abbey compared to the beautiful sort of saturated sunlight and Neapolitan flavored clothing there. So I was looking at kind of really beautiful sorbet hues that wouldn't look right at Downton Abbey, um, even in in the height of summer. And then with the movie set as well, you're bringing in a completely different look with the people working on the film set or the stars themselves. And then the costumes that the actors were wearing was like a whole new world as well. So it was a layer upon layer of different things to look at and so that it felt really rich, um, but uh, cohesive as you kind of wove through the storyline. So one of the featured costumes that we have in studio that I love is Lady Mary's peacock embellished evening gown. How did that dress come about? It was called the peacock dress from very early on because it had this sort of iridescent blue and silver sort of swirled um, embroidery. I went back to look at um, the original fashion source books and looked at shapes which had these sort of little waspy um, silhouettes and these sort of fuller ballet length skirts. I was looking at asymmetric um, hemlines because that was really um, on point for 1928. So. It's sort of shorter at the front and longer at the back. It's one of my favorites. Now let's talk about Lady Edith for a minute. And of course that kimono look that she wore during her time in the French Riviera. What were some of the details and what were some of the design mantra going through your head as you were designing this particular look? So the pajama set is unaltered. It's like it's it was perfection. It had Lady Edith stamped all over it in terms of the color and the tone and the sort of fluidity of it, but I'd have had her in it every day if I could have. It was, um, yeah, really glorious. A lot of people may not think it's a big deal today, and of course it isn't, but women wearing trousers in the 20s was actually very controversial. So in a way, you're really pushing the boundaries here with style in the 20s, and that's incredibly directional. A real statement but it would have felt wrong not to have embraced it given the chance, given the, you know, the setting and the, the, the time. It was, I think we needed to be bold and um, be brave with it. Do you have any favorite pieces or even a fun story behind any of these particular looks that Downton fans might enjoy? There are so many beautiful pieces that you, you know, aren't on screen for that long, but the, the craft involved is just incredible. There were some amazing evening dresses in the Riviera. One of my favorites was a yellow and silver beaded fringed dress that we had on Lucy. And I've always wanted to do fringing. I've always worried that the sound department might not be too happy, but with, on this occasion, I thought, well, she's going to be dancing. We're going to have movement. And it just felt like too good an opportunity to miss. We have Cora in worked with Fortuny to print silver metallic on velvet for her gown. And I constructed this beautiful halter neck dress for Lady Edith. So it was like all my favorite textiles in one ensemble. You had your beading, you had your lama, you had your velvet, you had your devore. 
I love this, Anna, and I feel like speaking to you is a perfect example of how costumes really do enhance and tell the story of a character in an unspoken way. And I think sometimes for me, that is the most important part of a movie. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. That means I've, I've done my job well. Thank you very much. It was lovely to speak to you. Well, hello, Lady Mary. Look at this. You guys, I get to see this in person. This is quintessential Downton Abbey, and all you fans out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. This evening wear, the embellishment, the shape, the silhouette. And I think as we saw Lady Mary get more adventurous in this new film with her wardrobe choices, this really is so signature for her, and I love this because it really is a wisp of a fabric, but it has so much structure and shape at the same time. The navy blue with the silver swirls, hence its nickname, this is the peacock dress. From evening wear to leisure wear. Um, I love this for a day outfit. Beautiful palazzo pants, a beautiful silk shell, and of course, an original printed one-of-a-kind kimono jacket to layer on top of that. It was easy going, but it was exactly the elegance that we wanted to see these characters in. And again, you may think palazzo pants are very casual or very fashionable today. They were actually very controversial back then. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Dressed. And I hope you enjoyed this little European escape exploring all of the stunning costumes of Downton Abbey, a new era. And I can't wait to see you all again next time. Until then.